What role do parents play in shaping their children's character and choices at school? There is a common misconception about this that I want to confront. Here is a version that I heard recently from Anushka Jolly, a teenage serial entrepreneur who founded the Anti-Bullying Squad. The project won Shark Tank India. More recently, she served as a youth ambassador for 100.org. She made these comments as part of a webinar in which I was a participant. Schools is definitely a place where students spend majority of their time. But I feel that you are shaped mostly by what you see and experience at home with your family. When we talk about schools having a responsibility for well-being, we often forget that a school is providing a space. They are enabling social interaction. They're enabling opportunity. But they are not ultimately raising the child. That needs to be done by the parents and the caretakers. As a parent, your job is to send your kid to school and enable them in such a way that they are able to go to their class and decide who they want to be influenced by. Do I want to hang out with the kids that make me be the best version of myself and participate in class? Do I want to hang out with the students that are making me participate in illicit activities? Anushka expresses ideas that rest on common but problematic assumptions about the roles that parents and schools play in supporting the well-being of children. Anushka is not the source of those assumptions. It just happened that I heard her express them in a public forum. The statements are perfectly reasonable, emotionally true, and logically follow from certain assumptions. Let's examine the foundational assumption of that idea. It goes something like this. The pressures applied by parents at home create good choice-making characteristics in their child's mind. Those characteristics emerge in the child's school behavior as choices about the influences that they accept. It's like when parents choose to send a lunch from home to make sure that when their child eats at school, they get a satisfying, nutritious meal. Anushka's argument rests on the idea that parents can send their child to school with, shall we say, a character lunch inside their minds. The character the parents cultivate at home enables the child to make good choices at school. Let's extend the analogy by getting clear about a few literal facts about human needs. Food is a primary human need. If the need for food is thwarted for long enough, death will result. Starvation, even without death, can severely compromise learning. Another primary human need we have is air. Without air, under normal circumstances, brain damage can result in about five minutes and brain death in 10. In certain cities like Kathmandu, Nepal and Santiago, Chile, which are cities I have visited, the air pollution is terrible. Yet parents, no matter how rich, have never taken responsibility for providing fresh, clean air for their child alone. It is utterly absurd to think that a parent should provide their child with a self-contained breathing apparatus like those used by firefighters and scuba divers. So the question is whether the supports for well-being that enable children to make good decisions are more like food, as the argument assumes, or whether they are more like air, which means that it is absurd to expect parents to provide sufficient support from home. Fortunately, there is a science that has been studying psychological needs for decades. Turns out there are three universal psychological needs for relatedness, autonomy, and competence. Those three needs, plus sleep, serve as the enabling conditions for psychological well-being in humans of all ages. I have argued in my book, The Agentic Schools Manifesto, and in a video on my website, which is linked in the description below, that the psychological needs, except sleep, are more like air than food. What I propose is that while the argument Anushka makes feels true, it does not place a realistic expectation on parents. Parents do have three important forms of influence. First, by supporting those needs consistently at home, 
which is exactly what Anusha expects them to do based on some of her other comments during that webinar. Second, by choosing a school that is already structured to make the support of those needs an ongoing high priority. Third, by advocating for their school to become better at supporting the psychological needs of the children they serve. I made it clear to Anushka that when so much of a child's time is spent at school, parents have outsourced the task of raising them. Parents are an important influence for as long as they are involved in the child's life. But parents should recognize that schools are raising their children in exact proportion to the time the child spends at school. To review, parents can provide nutritional supports from home and they can ensure the child gets adequate sleep at home. However, they cannot send better air from home, nor can they supplement the child's needs for relatedness, autonomy, and competence at school. Their best option for ensuring better psychological support is by either choosing a school that is good at it already, which can be difficult to determine, or by getting the school to take up the challenge of getting better at supporting psychological needs. The first option, providing psychological support at home, is available to all parents, but does not have much of an influence on a child's need satisfaction at school. The second option, choosing a school that is already good, is only available to some parents. The third option, changing a school so that it becomes better at supporting psychological needs, is quite challenging, but that is an option I want to encourage. The challenge of getting schools on board with this is why I wrote the Agentic Schools Manifesto, created the website holisticequity.org, and work on embedding the psychology of learning in policy so policy stops undermining learning through deeper learning advocates. You can learn more about all this at holisticequity.org. I've included relevant links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and please consider supporting this channel by visiting the contribution page at holisticequity.org forward slash contribution.html.